fact that to be a good software engineer, you don't have barriers like language. Um, that helps a lot of Indians and immigrants um, just enter this space because really to be good at tech, you have to be good at tech, not anything else. Hello everybody, Marunam Aditya. I did move here when I was very young, but some of the earliest memories I have are around close family and friends, like a large family, um, enjoying festivals, enjoying you know, the local life. Coming to Canada was a planned move for my parents. They, although it was much harder back when they moved, you know, we didn't have things like Uber that makes it easier to travel. We didn't have things like um, DoorDash that makes it easier to get food delivery. My personal earliest challenges were getting used to the English language. Um, I definitely learned it in India, but I wasn't used to speaking it day to day, every day. So the first year of schooling was a bit more challenging than anything else. And then on a broader scale, um, I'd say finding a community. Being in a new country without, without having a circle to help you out, guide you, without having a community is definitely hard. I think most of the challenges were around getting accustomed to, you know, the weather, the English language. I don't think there were any issues around not feeling welcome. Um, finding an initial network or circle for myself finding friends and for my parents finding other families. Um, I think that was probably, that definitely helped. Most of my network today, it's uh, very broad. Um, all of my friends are from different parts of the world, some from Europe, some from Asia, some from United States. Um, and I think being in Canada actually helped lead to that because there's a lot of people that come here from different parts of the world. So you're exposed to a lot of different perspectives and different friend groups. For me, the fondest memories early on were in schools and definitely the extracurriculars I participated in. There were a lot of opportunities to get exposed to different sports, different teams, different um, clubs. Um, my favorite was probably getting involved with robotics very early on and learning how to program very early on. And I think that eventually led me down the path to becoming a software engineer and getting very involved in the tech space. It's a pretty big program uh, called First Robotics and the best part about it was finding like-minded individuals who like building things, who like tinkering things. And so I had a tight-knit group of 10 to 20 friends. We would all just after school spend hours building robots um, for that year's challenge and then going to competitions um, throughout Canada and often into the States um, competing with other teams and other individuals. I first heard about Bitcoin while flying to India. Um, there was a magazine that the airlines provided called Popular Science and I was flipping through it and I was reading about Bitcoin. I didn't get it then. A couple of years later, um, my in my freshman year of college, someone shared the Ethereum white paper. And I also didn't understand it then. Um, but eventually, I got curious and I looked into the technology. I started tinkering. I started um, building Web3 protocols, play, programming um, in the space. And that's what got me into the weeds of the technologies and realized it's some it's an area that I care about and I want to build, build in. Looking back, I'd worked in big data a lot. And when you realize the blockchain is basically a publicly available data set, you realize there's a lot of incredible insights you could pull out. Um, so that was the angle that I wanted to come into the space at, helping you know, make what's happening on the blockchain understandable, helping take what's happening and you know, that's hard for regular users to realize, um, making that readable for the average person. Um, that's, that's what I particularly found to be a barrier in the space and it's an area that I thought I could contribute to because of my previous experience working in big tech on large data. Moving down to Seattle to work at Microsoft was a great experience. I spent about three years there, made a lot of new friends. It's funny because looking back, that work directly influenced the kind of work that I'm doing in the Web3 space now. There are many Indians that are in the tech space, and I think that is just a very pragmatic approach of um, building or 
getting opportunities that can lead to um, a good life. For a lot of um, immigrants, tech is the perfect opportunity because it provides financial stability. So at Blockscope, we're building Web3 tools to make um, what's happening on the blockchain readable, understandable by everyday users. Um, it's crazy to think that it's been a decade and still some of the most primitive tools that we take for granted today aren't available in the Web3 space. Let me give you an example. Whenever funds get moved to your bank account, you probably get an email, a notification, or something like that. In the current state of Web3 and blockchain technologies, most people actually don't get notified when funds move to their wallet or their accounts and move out. So our goal at Blockscope is to help bring this technology to the masses by building these tools that really solve critical problems that are barriers for user adoption. I spent many years during university with my college roommate, who's also my co-founder now, building products that we wanted to turn into lasting um, companies. When we got involved in the Web3 space, we realized there's very pressing problems that our particular background in big data, in technologies could help solve. And all of those things together um, is what keeps us motivated, keeps us going. Um, realizing that the solutions that we build actually help solve problems for real users. Looking back over the last year, we've definitely benefited a lot by getting involved in the different communities in and around Toronto that you know, are made up of individuals that are pro-blockchain, that are interested in this technology. So that's one key takeaway. Find others that are working in the same space as you and connect with them. Tell them about what you're doing. Share your story. Um, learn from them. Often uncertainty about if this te tech is here to stay or if it's just a cycle and it'll go away. I think this technology is here to stay. Some form of Web3 and blockchain will be around a very long time. One of my predictions is that next big wave of adoption we get will be driven by a lot of the institutions that are onboarding into the space. From who we work with, from the kind of people we're involved with, we know that there's interest for larger companies to come into the space. I think an uh, added side effect will be a lot more tools, a lot more products, a lot more applications in this space will become safer. Experiencing um, challenging things and working on hard problems is worth it. It's very rewarding when things work out at the end. And even if they don't, the journey is definitely worth it.